بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد العلماء ورث الأنبياء the scholars are the inheritance are the inheritors of the prophets عليهم أفضل الصلاة والسلام and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of our scholars and bless them and bless us with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and knowledge and assisting one another are all good deeds which bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and assisting one another supporting one another is incredibly important and all of these great attributes are contained in a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Sheikh Muhammad bin Saleh bin Uthaymin rahimahullah taala gave many many benefits with regards to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we're going to read. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu taala anhu an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qal, "Man nafsa an an mu'min kurbatan min kurbi dunya." نفس الله عنه قربة من قرب يوم القيامة ومن يسر على معسر يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر المسلم ستره الله في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون العبد ما كان عبد في عون الأخي ومن سلك طريقا يلتلمس فيه علما سهل الله له طريقا للجنة وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يطلون كتاب كتاب الله ويتدارسونه يتدارسونها بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغش وغش وغشية وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده ومن بطأ به عمله لم يسرع به نصبه رواه مسلم بهذا اللفظ that was in uh, Muslim and it was the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تلا عنه who said that the messenger or that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever helps to remove a difficulty from a Muslim from the, from a believer in this life Allah will remove the difficulty from the difficulty of the day of resurrection or the day of judgment and whoever makes it easy upon the person who's in debt, Allah will make it easy upon them in this life as well as the hereafter. And whoever covers the fault of a Muslim, then Allah will cover his fault in this life as well as the next. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain helping the servant as long as he helps his brother and whoever traverses the path of knowledge Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise and a people do not congregate in one of the houses of Allah meaning the mas masajid reading the book of Allah the Quran and teaching it to one another studying it between them except that Allah sends uh, peace amongst them you know comfort and tranquility amongst them and that their the angels surround them and mercy is showered upon them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in those who are in his company meaning the malaika And nothing will benefit a person from their nationality or from their 
their tribe or their insab, but rather it is your deeds. And this is collected in Muslim. In this hadith, there are many, many countless benefits that the ulama bring about. And one of the, or from the many benefits, is it shows us the importance of assisting our brothers and sisters in Islam when they're in difficulty. And that by removing a difficulty from your brother or your sister in Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove a difficulty from you uh, on the day of judgment. And that by forgiving a person in debt or assisting them in removing their debt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove difficulty and make things easy upon you in this life as well as the hereafter. And that a person should strive to cover the faults of their Muslim brother and sisters. And by doing so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your faults and sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of all that we do. Some of the benefits that Ibn Rafaymin mentioned, some of the fawaid, he said, is this hadith, it encourages us to strive to remove the difficulty or difficulties of our Muslim brothers and sisters. And that this will remove difficulties for the believers on the Day of Judgment. And the Shaykh said that this includes the difficulties of, of wealth. Maybe it has to do with their wealth, you know, maybe in their livelihood. Or the difficulties they experience in their body could be through sickness or health issues. Or the difficulty that they experience by being attacked and, uh, and through war. Like we see with our brothers and sisters in Syria, that at least we can strive to make dua and supplication for them. And that this will, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove some difficulties for us in the difficulty of the day of judgment, which will be a difficult day for most of mankind. Another benefit of this hadith is that al jaza min jins al amal, which means that the reward for something is in proportion or in accordance with with the deed that a person did. Meaning if a person uh, remove the difficulty and harms for someone in this life, that the difficulty and harms will be removed from them in the next. And this is from the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justice is so great and so complete and perfect that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is always out of His divine mercy and wisdom giving us more reward than what we deserve for the deeds that we do. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another benefit the Shaykh mentioned is that this hadith affirms for us the day of judgment. That this hadith authenticates for us or affirms for us that yawm al-qiyamah, that there is a day of reckoning that will be held accountable for the deeds and the things that we did in this life. Another benefit of this hadith that it also illustrates for us that on the Day of Judgment there will be a great difficulty. That it affirms for us that the Day of Judgment there will be trials and tribulations. And those are the signs that the day are coming near. There's many trials and tribulations, but especially on Yom Al-Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ يَوْمٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ asira." So this shows us that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and... On that day, for the disbelievers, it will be a great difficulty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ غَيْرَ يَسِيرٍ And that for the disbelievers, it will be other than easy. Meaning it will be a great difficulty. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qamr يُقُولُ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا يَوْمٌ عَسِيرٌ or Asir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the disbelievers on that day will say that this is difficult, extremely difficult and the believers due to their righteous deeds will have ease bi'idhnillah ta'ala this hadith also shows, illustrates for us and encourages us to be easy and to assist our brothers and sisters when they're in debt and when they're having difficulties and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things easy for us if we do so bi'idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala another benefit we gain from this hadith is that the person who makes it easy upon the person who is experiencing difficulty that they will receive reward in this life as well as the next so they will receive two rewards and another benefit the Shaykh mentioned from this hadith is that this hadith encourages us to cover one another's faults and the Shaykh said brought some very beneficial uh, benefits or details with regards to this he said he said rahimahullah ta'ala is that that this covering of one another's faults is muqayyid meaning that it is restricted and that it is a sitr thalatha aqsam that there are three different ways or three different rulings pertaining to covering one's faults covering uh, someone else's faults or sins he said a qism al awwal an yakun khairan he said the first type is that it is uh, good and beneficial to cover their faults wa qism al thani an yakun sharran and the second is that it, the by covering their faults it is uh, it will be evil or harmful wa qism al thalith la yadri an yakun khairan um sharran and the third division is that when a person does not know whether it's go- going to be whether it's good or whether it's bad to cover a person's fault. And then the Sheikh brought about many details about it. He said the first uh, level or division is when it is best to cover someone's fault. And this is something, this is matloob and it's mahmood. This is uh, praiseworthy and this is what is uh, recommended to do. So, for example, if you see someone who is a person who's known for righteousness and good manners and has many good characteristics, and you see that they make a mistake, okay? And all of us make mistakes, as the Prophet wasallam said, كُلُّ إِبْنَ آدَمْ خَطَى وَخَيْنًا خَطَائِينَ تَوَابُونَ All the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those who are, of those who repent. So, in this situation, the Shaykh said, that to cover that person's fault, this person who is no, a person of righteousness, who just fell into a mistake, they fell into an issue of bid'ah, they fell into an issue, a, a, a mistake, a sin, that you should cover their fault. You know, if the benefit is outweighing the harm, of course, by spri- by uh, not covering their fault. He said the second one is is that it is evil, the, the one that cover by covering their fault it is going to spread evil and this is a situation in which you find a, an individual who is in sin and they have enmity towards people and by covering their fault it will cause them to increase in evil and oppression then this situation it would be mevmum to cover their faults uh, it would be uh, sinful and wrong to cover their faults. In fact, it is better to expose them if this is, gonna, is going to stop them from, transgr- from transgressing even further. Uh, so, for example, if, uh, you know, this is a situation, the you see uh, the wife who's doing open sins and this and that and the other and disgracing her household and doing evil deeds then 
by allowing her to continue to transgress and not bringing this to attention of her husband would be sinful. So it would be better to cause to uh, alert her husband or vice versa. If the husband is transgressing and is causing great harm and by not by covering his fault, he's going to continue in harm, then you should alert the uh, the other spouse or the person who is maybe a teacher who is teaching people and they're spreading they're doing something harmful and by covering their faults that this is going to increase in harm then you should not cover but rather you should refer them to their uh, supervisor as the sheikh mentioned then he mentioned the third category and this is the person in which you don't know whether it's better to cover their faults or to expose their 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 fault and in this situation the sheikh said the asl is that you should cover a person's fault that the origin or the foundation or the basic principle is that you should cover a person's faults and this is what the hadith shows us that we should do and the uh, the kitab was sunnah another benefit the sheikh mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala in regards to this hadith he said that Allah the almighty assist his slaves as long as they assist one another they assist their brothers and they help one another and they support one another and help one another in things that they are they require and that they need and so this can be in many uh, issues in this worldly life and in relation to their religion and so forth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ta'awinu ala al-birri wa taqwa and cooperate on in uh, righteousness and God fearfulness so this and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says which is the opposite muqabila hadha in the same ayat wa la ta'awinu ala al-ithmi wa udwan and Allah the Almighty says and do not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity so we should not cooperate with one another in helping spread enmity and evil and and evil sins we shouldn't work with one another in spreading sins and doing bad uh, deeds but rather we should help one another to remove sins and to help correct one another and protect the spread and prevent the spread of evil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muhsineen and Allah loves those people who do righteousness and who help and assist and help rectify uh, the situation of one of, of other people another benefit we gain from this hadith that the sheikh mentioned he said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty is fully aware of everything he's the creator of the heavens and earth and he knows everything azza wa jal he he's a uh, he is the creator of all of our affairs and he is fully aware of all our affairs and he knows uh, when you are assisting your brothers and sisters and he knows when you are covering the faults of one another and and so forth and the opposite of that so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this hadith illustrates his ilm his, his knowledge and that he is the creator of the heavens and earth and he is ala kulli shayin qadir another benefit of this hadith is it also illustrates for us the adil, the complete and perfect justice that Allah the Almighty uh, possesses as one of his divine characteristics, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith illustrates for us the importance of seeking Islamic knowledge. And to it encourages us to also uh, traverse the path of knowledge and that it is a great reward to do so because as the Prophet sallallahu said uh, woman whoever traverses the path of knowledge then Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah and the Salaf al-Saleh, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, used to say, Talib al-Ilm, Talib al-Jannah, that seeking the knowledge is seeking the paradise, is seeking paradise. So, by striving to better benefit ourselves and, and gain more Islamic knowledge, we are striving to get to Jannah. And the Shaykh also mentions that that is also a, uh, that 
also illustrates for us the importance of having a sound intention in the ma'amal of the very actions are tied to the intentions that we should uh, strive to have correct intention when we're seeking the knowledge that we seek knowledge not to show off we seek knowledge not to debate uh, one another and we seek knowledge instead rather to seek knowledge in and of itself in order to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if we do it to show off if we do it to debate others and we do it to show up others and whatever then this will in fact be sinful and can lead us to the hellfire so one one path according to your intention it can either lead you to the jannah or it can lead you to the hellfire lead you to the jannah if your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek knowledge for the sake of seeking knowledge lead you to the hellfire if you are seeking knowledge to show off in front of the people as the Prophet sallallahu said in al-awwal nas yuqda alayhi yawm al-qiyamah rajal ustushida fa utiya fi fa'arahu ni'amu fa'arafa ila ila qal wa rajalun ta'allam al-ilm wa'allamuhu ila akhira hadith where the Prophet sallallahu said the first three on the day of judgment who will be judged will be the man who was martyred and the second one is the one who sought knowledge or became a knowledgeable person and also was a, the, the, the person who you know memorized the Quran and taught people the Quran but they did it in order to receive the pleasure of the people instead of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they will be thrown in the hellfire so it shows us that seeking the knowledge and doing these great deeds if the intention is not correct it can lead us to the hellfire instead of leading us to the paradise which is what we are striving to do bi'idnillah ta'ala is try to get to the paradise another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith also shows us the importance of go- traveling to seek knowledge and also the other way in which we can seek knowledge is also you know through the various forms for example we have the internet now we have uh, tapes and CDs we can listen to so it shows us that there's different ways of seeking the knowledge and that they're all beneficial ways in the in the 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 way as some of the scholars mention that it is better and uh, that is best of course if a person can travel travel to the ulama travel to the scholars sit with the scholars and benefit from them you know physically traveling and if one is unable to do so then in their home they can sit and they can listen and now you have various forms of recorded lectures the major scholars in this time and age have been you know their books are there their tapes are there their cds are there their internet sites are up and even translated material for us in english and other many other languages it's there so alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us now to seek the knowledge in the various forms uh, that there that it is available to us another benefit of this hadith illustrates for us is that it is important to strive to seek the knowledge meaning that we should work hard in in gaining knowledge and trying to attain knowledge and striving on the various paths to attain knowledge by having the intention and striving being steadfast, seeking, sitting, taking time, and and, and something I want to uh, bring up is as important as people who have families to try to strive to at least keep your house alive by reading a hadith every so often, if you can, once a day, or at least once a week, to keep life in your home and khair in your home and the angels in your home by by doing this by reading verses of the Quran or, or doing something and trying to look up the explanation the tafsir and something to keep your home alive and if you can go to a lecture or something in, in, in your local masajid then, then, then this is beneficial and this is what keeps the ummah alive and thriving and this is what helps spread khair throughout the ummah and, and, and helps to keep people from going astray bi idnillah ta'ala another benefit that 
the Sheikh mentioned in regards to this hadith, many there's many many benefits, is that the importance of collectively gathering together in the masajid and seeking knowledge and reading the Quran, learning the Quran, and as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Uh, the best of you is those who learn the Quran and and teach it. So it also shows us the importance of uh, seeking the knowledge and reading the Quran and learning the Quran and teaching the Quran for those who are able to teach it. And that those are some of the the those are the best of people as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described them. And this hadith also illustrates for us the that our our bloodlines will not benefit us ultimately. There may be benefit in this life, but ultimately it's our deeds and our good works. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet said, uh, does not look at our our uh, our bodies and our shapes and so forth, but he looks at our deeds and our hearts. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "In Allah la yandru ila adsadikum wa la ila surikum, walakin yandru ila alqulubukum wa amalakum." That verily Allah does not look to your uh, to your looks and your bodies, but rather He looks to your deeds and your hearts. So our iman, our good deeds, those things are going to benefit us. And of course we know Iman is on our tongues and it's in our hearts and it's our actions, our outward actions. All of those things make up Iman. Ta'ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah. And uh, in accordance with the prophetic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that that's what makes up Iman. So we have to do all of those things. Those things are going to benefit us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that uh, that uh, that the most pious, uh, the best of you, is those who are most pious. Uh, that you know, our piety is what's going to benefit us, and not our our race, our nationality, or uh, any of the those other things. But in fact, it's our relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this. These are just some of the benefits the Sheikh mentioned, and there are many books and many shurahat of this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.